Pipistrol is in far western Slovenia on the Italian border in a town called Adoshtina, where the company was founded in 1989. The new factory is in Gorizia, just across the border in Italy. This is the original factory, which is located right next door to a nice turf runway. Pipistrol's bread and butter has been airplanes like these, the Virus and Sinus, plus a trainer called the Alpha and the Taurus Motor Glider. Recently, the company formed a new division called Pipistrol Vertical Solutions, and it's developing multi-rotor aircraft for the urban air mobility market. But for the time being, the main products are piston fixed-wing airplanes and three to five electric airplanes per month. Pipistrol is a thoroughly state-of-the-art company. All the major design work is done in-house on CAD CAM equipment. Pipistrol was one of the first airplane factories I saw to incorporate barcode scanning at every phase of manufacture instead of paper travelers. Like most airplane companies, Pipistrol farms out some of its manufacturing to outside vendors. Slovenia has a long history of glider production, so it has a good industrial base for composite work. To control quality, Pipistrol builds its own tooling while outside companies do the layup work. In the original factory, Pipistrol builds some sub-assemblies, including pre-wired instrument panels and avionics, which are then carried over to the new factory across the border. And by the way, that's Ivo Boscarel, who founded Pipistrol in 1989. The Gorica factory has three assembly lines, but room for a lot more. Most of the factory output are Rotax-powered models used in the training and recreational market. The electric airplanes are on the far left in this clip. Assembly starts with the fuselage on its wheels, and here's Peter Boscarel to explain the flow. Basically, all our production line is made in different phases. At the beginning, we insert and uh, mount bigger parts, the undercarriage, also the mechanical parts, and then so on, when we move from face to face, we insert more components. The engine, the components, the electric, the dashboard, the cockpit, the seats, and so on. Then the propeller, the doors, all the production line is divided in 11 phases. All the components came from uh, Pipistrel DO Aeroscina from Slovenia. So we made here the production phases of assembly, production flights, uh, all labels, all documentation and deliveries to end customers. So here we really can see different, different phases. From the, the previous here we can already see more parts already installed, the dashboards, the, the controls, the pedals, and so on. Uh, the engine covers is still missing here, but when we go face by face, we will see all the components are already installed. Pipistrol's electric airplane is called the Alpha Electro, and the basic airplane is similar to the gasoline-powered Virus. In place of the Rotax, of course, the airplane is powered by a 50 kilowatt electric motor. And yeah, it's really that small. Although it has motor controls and other electric hardware, it's mechanically far simpler than the gasoline-powered version. Aircraft electric motors generally have cooling systems, and that's what the radiator at the bottom of the mount is for. It cools with a glycol mixture. The battery system consists of an array of several hundred cylindrical lithium-ion cells with groups of cells monitored by a battery management system. There are two packs, one in the nose behind the engine compartment and one in the rear where a baggage compartment would otherwise be. But there's no room for that because the batteries weigh a total of about 250 pounds. Once the airplane is fully assembled, it moves into the completion and inspection area and is then rolled out for a test flight off the turf runway. The electric airplanes get a thorough five-hour ring-out with an emphasis on battery function and monitoring and instrumentation. Beyond that, there's really not much to an electric airplane. The Electro has an endurance of about 50 minutes with reserve, and it requires about a minute of charging time for every minute of flight. I'll have another video later on flying the Electro, but meanwhile, find a full review in the August 2019 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. Thanks for watching.